So the idea of Project TCMS came through the uh, Tulsa County Medical Society Foundation as a way to expand the services that physicians can provide in the Tulsa community to particularly to benefit those that didn't normally have access to health care in the Tulsa area. Um, they have a condition that needs treatment. It may not be life-threatening, but certainly from a physical uh, job uh, social aspect, it may be a condition that needs to be treated, uh, and they need to be helped. They're active, viable citizens. They, they're working or can get back to work or should be able to work. Uh, and so they're a group of people, I think, that are neglected by the medical community except for a program like this. So I think, yes, it's a very valuable service. Well, I understand it's a, it's a big need because there are a number of people who don't have insurance or have are underinsured and don't have coverage for some of the things that they require care for. And some of the other programs out there, as I alluded to, may help them cover certain costs, but if they don't cover the entire rehabilitation cost, to me it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to put the patient through the painful experience of an operation if you don't really expect a good optimal outcome. Well, I think it's crucial because otherwise these patients and people within the community that don't have any access to health care end up recurrently going to emergency rooms, utilizing services that are very expensive and most of the time not really necessary for the problem that they have. And this is a way to take care of them in a way that's respectful to them, that's helpful, that takes the burden off the emergency rooms within the community it's a very expensive way to take care of and just going through the emergency rooms. So I think it's a vital need that uh, this community serves. That many of the communities that are, are, are our size or larger provide this type of service, but now Tulsa is providing this type of service as well. I had a lipoma, a lipoma, lipoma, I guess on the back of my neck, it was about the size of a baseball. And I went to the clinic here in, at Morton Clinic. Anyway, his nurse had called TCMS and set up, a, I guess, an appointment. And next thing I know, I got paperwork to fill out. I filled the paperwork out, sent it in. And about, I mean, it happened pretty fast, too. You know, it was within like, within three weeks, I believe, I was already seeing the surgeon. And a week later, I was having surgery. The patient came uh, with his history, and he had a obvious physical uh, abnormality, and he met the criteria to uh, be a surgical candidate. So I think uh, the records that he came with were certainly adequate. He didn't have to have any x-rays or laboratory data in this case. But I think in another circumstance, it may come uh, well prepared from that standpoint. I went in for a. I believe it was for a teeth examination. I had one of my teeth that went bad, and I couldn't get my, uh, I couldn't get a good x-ray because of the, the knot was so huge on the back of my neck. It was about the size of baseball. If you put your, you could stick your hand about like this, and it fit right inside on the back of my neck. And then all of a sudden here in the past two years, it just started getting, just growing and growing and growing, getting bigger. And when they took an x-ray of my neck, they uh, seen that one of the vertebrae, my top vertebrae, my, uh, you know, right at the base of my skull, was pushed over by the lip lipoma. And they said that was, that was probably a good reason why I was get, starting to get headaches. And I, would, I kept long hair to cover the knot. Because it was kind of embarrassing. I mean, I didn't want people looking at me like I was a uh, oh, Quasimodo or something, you know. As soon as he got, um, you know, he did his surgery, I went to, I went and got my hair cut and got it cut down to where I look human again. And it's, uh, in the first week, I mean, I felt like I had a lot of energy and I just felt good about myself again. You know, it was, you know, this is me. <laughs> and, you know, it's not the long haired hippie, you know, 1970s guy, you know. It changes his whole persona. I mean, he, he may go on to, doing bigger and better things than being where he is right now as a 
cook or a supervisor or something like that at the mission. Uh, and he has talent. He's, he's an intelligent person. Uh, and uh, that physical abnormality uh, he had to cover up, and therefore he couldn't be quite as presentable as he otherwise might be. And when he came back, yes, he was. He had a he had a haircut, and he was dressed differently. His whole persona had changed. So that alone is worth worth something. You know, I want a new life. I want, I want to find the woman, uh, find the woman of my dreams, and and love her, and love me, and just find our little piece of the earth, and just be happy for the rest of my days. I had a t completely torn rotator cuff. I kept going to Good Samaritan, and first she thought I had like arthritis in my shoulder. So she tried to give me like a shot, and then uh, went back a few weeks later, it hadn't done any good. So she uh, said, let's send you for MRI. And so I went and done that, and waited a few weeks, went back, and she said, uh, well, no wonder you're in pain. She said, um, your rotator cuff is completely torn, and I'm sorry, but there's nothing else we can do for you, as they have no orthopedic surgeon or, you know, anything else. But she told me to, she gave me some uh, prescription for pain and told me to go to, like, Catholic Charities or OSU, and I went there. And I saw a doctor, and he read my report. He said, I'm sorry. He said, it's going to take surgery. And, of course, there's nothing we can do. We don't have, you know, any orthopedic surgeons. So, actually, I cried. I mean, I was just, I, I cried in his office and broke down. And then he said, don't give up. And he gave me a booklet, which had Catholic Charities and I think it's the Moton Clinic and all that. He said, um, if you need anybody to talk to, he said, come back, just come in, and they'll let you come in, and I guess just for support, because he knew I was upset. And so, uh, but his words were, don't give up. I'm like, okay. So I called Catholic Charities and all that, and they said uh, they were only taking pregnant women and stuff like that. So I had to go back to Good Samaritan to get some more pain medication. The doctor said, sure, I can get you some while you're still looking for some help. And he sent a nurse in and said, now we have this, there's a new program. He said, would you fill out these papers? And I'm like, okay. So I filled them out and I sent them back to the van. I got called that night and told me to be at Dr. Cash's office. And I'm like, uh, you know, but, but what's this going to cost me? And, you know, I was scared. I didn't know what I was getting into. And, I mean, it was like just three, two to three days later, uh, I went to Dr. Cash. And he said, uh, how soon do you want to, you know, have it done? I said, as soon as possible. And so uh, that's <laughs> how I got it done. My husband has always worked, been a really hard worker, worked in a metal shop, and we've always had great insurance. He had a heart attack about eight years ago now, and uh, he has a whole lot of other problems with diabetes and, and everything. He's had spells where I've had to stay around here with him, scared to leave him and stuff. I quit my job about three years ago to help uh, take care of my husband. I just turned 57, so I'm not old enough to get any government help. One of the nice things I'm able to do that I think is helpful is to be able to screen the patients, to identify ones that fit appropriately within the program, that we think that we can help, that we can either provide physical therapy services or medications or braces, or possibly even be seen in a physician's office. And then we and direct that patient to the place where they need to go where they can get the most appropriate help. I can, <laughs> I can do, I can get my arm up here. I can <laughs> do all that now. I can sleep, yeah, I can sleep. And my most grateful thing is, I mean, I can work out in my flower beds and my garden and I can hold my grandkids now. <laughs> Thank you.
la enfermedad que tenía era en mi garganta, era una, una infección en mi garganta. Uh, no recuerdo el nombre de la, en este momento, de la de la, del, el nombre de la, de la enfermedad, pero me salía mucha pus de mi garganta y ya tenía muchos años visitando diferentes tipos de clínicas y nomás me daban antibióticos y no me ayudaban, pero en este momento no, no recuerdo que, cómo se llamaba la enfermedad, sino que me salía pus de mi garganta. Sí, yo me supe de, ese, de esa clínica por mi esposa y acudí ahí, ahí me, me consiguieron el especialista para, para que me pudiera ayudar sobre mi, mi problema. Un impacto muy grande porque yo tenía mucho tiempo, años, no, no sé, no recuerdo ahorita cuántos años exactamente, pero no sé, yo pienso que unos cuatro años con mi problema, ya era un fastidio, a veces no quería ni hablar tanto así con mi esposa ni con la gente porque era, me molestaba mucho, tenía muy hinchada mi garganta y, y ahorita no, no dormía a veces con ese problema, a veces lloraba con mi esposa de que tendré... Porque era, no sé, no, era un fastidio tener eso. Y yo pensé que era algo más, mucho más grave de lo que tenía porque no se me quitaba con nada. Tenía mal aliento. No sé, muchas cosas y de aquí de allá para acá no tengo que preocuparme sobre eso. No sé, no. Muy, fue un impacto bastante grande porque... Todo el tiempo tenía eso en mi cabeza, todo el tiempo, todo el tiempo, todo el tiempo, todo el tiempo. Y cada vez se agravaba más. Y yo tenía mucho miedo de que fuera algo más grave. Y sí fue un impacto muy diferente de ese entonces para acá. Por eso yo estoy muy agradecido con ustedes. Con usted, con, con el doctor que me ayudó, el especialista. Con todos, con todos. Con el programa. Porque aparte de, de, de que no me cobraron, eso ya segunda, o sea, me ayudaron con un problema que yo, que yo tenía muchos años, muchos años, y eso es lo más importante, o sea, aparte que no me cobraban, me quitaron un problema de años y años que yo tenía, y que, pues, no sé, yo pensé que ya estaba, no sé, mira. Physicians go into medicine because they want to take care of people, and we don't particularly care what their situation is. We want to provide services for them. So this gives physicians an easy avenue to care for these patients in a way that fits within their practice schedule, and then when their office schedule and their surgical schedule, and it just makes it easy for them to do it. I think it's a rewarding experience for me. It was wonderful to see this young lady that I cared for experience a good outcome and, and be part of her own rehabilitation and not be sitting on the sideline wishing that she could have the same opportunity that somebody else who happened to have insurance would be able to achieve.